Spider-Man 2 took a team of nearly two and a half thousand people three years to make. And with animations as slick as this, it's no wonder it took a huge team with a massive budget to finish. But what if I said you could make animations like this with free software in under 10 minutes? Are you serious? I'm gonna be using this free symbiote suit rig I found by Outlaw Video Production. There'll be a link to download this rig in the description below, as well as a link to the original file. In order to make this type of animation, we need to do three things. Make the symbiote effects, deform the mesh, and make the animations. So let's get started with step one. Start by adding a curve and then deleting it. Next, you want to use the draw curve tool and draw a curve from the shoulder and out through the arm. After you've drawn the curve, while still in edit mode, select all the control points and head over to control points set handle type and select automatic. Now if you move a point you will see the curve handles will adjust automatically. To be able to animate this select the control point and press ctrl h. That will bring up the hooks menu. Select hook to new object. Now all you need to do is repeat these steps until you have a bunch of empties controlling each point of the curve. It's a good idea to rename these starting from the top just so you don't get confused. After you've renamed all the controls, scale them down and press Ctrl A and select all transforms to deltas. You can choose to leave the hierarchy like this, which will create an IK spline setup, or you can parent them into an FK chain. It's up to you which one you use. Now that you've rigged the curve, it's time to add a geometry nodes group, starting with a resample curve node. To make the individual strands of the curve, add a curve circle, spiral, and an instance on points node. Set the spiral's start and end radius to 1 and the height to 0. Plug this into the instance and the curved circle into the points. You can set the resolution to whatever you want, but I think 3 works the best. Add a realize instance node and a curve to mesh node and plug the output into the profile curve slot. Now you should have 3 tubes going along your original curve. To get the meshes to twist together, you need to add a set curve tilt node and put this after the resample curve node. Add a spline parameter node and plug the factor into the tilt. To adjust it, just add a math node, set it to multiply and adjust the second value to get the twisting you want. If you need to smooth out the twist, just adjust the count in the resample curve node. To add this tapering effect, you need to add a set curve radius node. Put this in after the tilt node and in the radius, plug the spline parameters factor. You can see it's tapering from the start to the end with a linear fall off. But to make this a bit more organic, we can add a float curve node and adjust it to whatever profile we want. The last thing we need to do is add a trim curve node to animate it going in and out. Add the node after the set curve radius node and you can see that if you move the start value, it changes the length of the curve. And there you have it. The material I used is just a principal BSDF with a low roughness and a noise texture plugged into the displacement. However, because this doesn't have UVs, it doesn't show up correctly. So to fix that, head back into the geometry nodes window and create two capture attribute nodes. Next, add a spline parameter node and plug the spline parameter's length into both of the value inputs. Next, you need to add a combined XYZ node and connect both attributes to the X and Y inputs. Finally, add a store named attribute node after the curve to mesh node. Change the values to vector and face corner and plug the output of the combined XYZ node into the value input. Rename this to something like UV and that's it. Back in the shader editor, you can use these new UVs using an attribute node. And in the name slot, use the same name that you typed in earlier, which was UV. You can now plug the vector output into your textures, giving you nice uniform UVs. This brings us on to the second step, which is deforming the mesh. For these deformations, you need to select the character mesh and create a new geometry node setup. Add a set position node and a noise texture. Set the noise texture to 4D and create a vector math node. Set this node to scale and in the vector input add a normal node. And in the scale input connect the factor of the noise texture. Duplicate the math node and connect both vectors together and the output vector to the offset. You can now see that the noise is deforming our mesh. And to change the scale of this just adjust the scale value or the noise texture. To be able to control which areas of the mesh are affected by this noise, we need to create a sphere. Drag and drop that sphere into the geometry nodes window and set that object info node to relative. Next, create a geometry proximity node as well as a sample nearest surface node. Set the operation of the sample nearest surface node to vector and connect up the geometry. In the sample nearest surface node, add a normal node to the sample position input. Next, add a math node and set it to subtract. Connect the position output to the second vector input 
and in the first input add the position node. Duplicate the vector math node and change the operation to dot product. Connect the output vector and the sample nearest surface values to the vector inputs. Finally, add a switch node, set it to float and connect the dot product output to the switch input and connect the geometry proximity distance to the false input. Make sure to add this geometry node setup to any of the other loose parts of your mesh and you're done. You can now animate this in conjunction with the symbiote tentacles appearing. Speaking of animation, it's now time to move on to step three, which is animation. For the animation, I gathered as much reference images as I could find on Spider-Man's poses and then I started with the blocking. Think of these poses as the main points of action in your animation. With this first pose, I try and keep him grounded by having his center of gravity aligned between his feet. I also wanted this pose to look like he's ready for combat. The next pose was anticipating the jump. I wanted to keep him as low as possible, as if he's building up lots of energy to jump up as high as he can. All the while thinking about how Spider-Man would pose, given how athletic he is. I'm trying to keep these poses fairly loose and block out the motion fairly quickly. I try not to spend too long on one pose because I can always go back later and adjust it. As long as it gives the idea of the general motion, I'm happy with the first pad. Next pose is the anticipation, before he shoots out the Venom symbiote. I want this pose to look as athletic and dynamic as possible. The stretching out the limbs and curling the body really shows off his athleticism. Next is the concept, the pose in which Spidey picks up the object with the symbiote, having his arms stretched out as far as possible, also while having the opposite side wound up as it's ready to move in the opposite direction. Then it's the grab. This is essentially a mirrored pose of the contact, with just a little bit of tweaking to the limbs and the fingers too. Mirroring poses is such an easy way to block out complex animations like these, and it really helps you save that precious time. And last up is the final pose, which is slamming into the ground. With this pose, you really want to emphasize the impact. So pushing the sensor of gravity control and curling up that spine really sells this action. With these poses blocked out, I started to adjust the keyframes to get a better sense of the timing. When I was happy with that, I moved on to blocking plus. This is just a fancier version of blocking, where we push the poses a little bit more and add in some more in-between frames, such as adding a slight hold on the anticipations and tightening up the timing on the fast moving sections of the animation. This phase is all about tying the key poses together and directing how you want the animation to work. The longer you spend on this phase of animation, the easier it will become later down the road. Now that we have a rough idea of the timing, it's time to start adding in the effects we made earlier. This is where we can really see the whole animation come together. Finally, I check all the arcs using a motion path tool, polishing up bits and pieces to finalize the animation. And with the animation and effects combined, here's the final result. Let me know in the comments how you think this turned out. And if you enjoyed this video, give me a like and subscribe if you want to see more animations in Blender. And if your spidey senses are still tingling, take a look at this playlist, all dedicated to your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man.